In this video, I'm going to be showing you some more advanced techniques for color grading and color correcting in the free multi-platform video editor shortcut. Hello everyone, I am Budget Recording and on this channel I try and help make your audio sound better and video look better in videos such as these. As you may have seen before, I have a video on simple color grading in this exact same program. On my YouTube channel, it's like a year old now. And I'm not sure if it's just that there are more, there's been some updates that have added more features or I just missed some, but there are a bunch of different things you can do to do more color grading in Shotcut. And so I figured I would do a follow-up video as it's a great program. And here we go, I guess. If you haven't already seen it, uh, make sure you watch the other video. I We'll try and put a card in the top left. If not, it should hopefully be in the description. And in that video, I talked about using the hue, lightness, saturation filter, the color grading filter, and the contrast filter. And so I'm not gonna talk about those at all. I'm just going to try and make this color grade look better. And to do that, I found a bunch of other filters I may have talked about white balance too, but I'll go over that quick as well. So we, I've got white, it, white balance, brightness, levels, saturation, and LUT, which is like all of those in one, but I'll talk about that in a sec. That is pretty simple. It's the simplest way to do it. So white balance, you can change the color temperature of the image. Uh, most cameras can do this in uh, camera and make sure you enable it. That's why nothing was changing. And now it's getting more blue. So if you want like a more sad look to it, or you can make it more yellow, like it's a bright sunny day. I'm gonna make it slightly more blue, I think. Not terribly. And then brightness. Um, so I'm actually going to bring this lightness down. Don't wanna go too far cause then I get a lot of noise in the shadows. I'm already getting a lot of noise. Uh, I'm not sure that changed at all. But in the brightness, I'm going to bring the brightness up. So you can do that. Or if you want, you can bring the brightness down for whatever reason. I'm going to bring it up a little past 100. So yeah, there's some noise in the shadows, but that's just because of the camera I used. If you've got a camera that shoots uh, higher quality video, you won't have that to the same extent. Uh, and then levels, I'm not really sure how to explain most of these features, but, uh, they're kind of cool. You can do input black, which makes all the dark parts darker. Um, and then input white is the exact opposite. All the light parts get lighter until eventually the whole thing just goes back to normal, I guess. <laughs> Uh, gamma makes it brighter or darker. Uh, and quick tip, you can also use your scroll wheel on your mouse to adjust it. Some of them go by one, that one, sometimes they go by more. Um, and then output black is the exact opposite of input black, it seems like, kind of. It's not quite, but it's similar. Uh, and output white is almost the opposite of input white. And then there's some presets, just like with all of them. Uh, you can adjust the channel, which is kind of cool. And then histogram, you can add if you want to start reading scopes for more advanced color grading. Uh, I'm just gonna turn that off for now because there's an alternative that I can sh uh, add on. If you go into view and then scopes, you can turn on like the uh, vector that just appeared down there. Uh, I'll try and make that bigger. So there's that. Um, you've got red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow, as well as what's called the skin tone line. But then you can adjust where everything is there by looking at that. And you would use a scope just so you don't have to rely on the monitor you're looking at. Because I can pretty much guarantee what the monitor I'm looking at is different from what you have. Uh, you can also add some other scopes, such as the histogram, or 
I won't go through all of these. Um, the waveform. Ah, that's audio. Oops. Didn't. Yeah, I didn't read that completely. That's what I wanted. That waveform. Uh, so I'll just make that go away. But there's the RGB waveform. And then, okay, so enough of the scopes. On to the uh, other effects or filters is what they're technically called. There's saturation. It's the exact same as this saturation, except this is just standalone. So if all you need is saturation, you have it. I'm not going to do that though. And so there's a decent grade, but this is a great instance of it. The top of it is completely washed out. Um, so if I go, even if I go into the color grade and hop into the highlights and bring that down, it just brings down the whole image, as you can see on the waveform. Something else you can do, I'm not going to go into depth, into much depth now. Uh, it could be a whole nother video if you guys would like it. Uh, you can add a mask, so like a simple shape, and then rectangle, put it like right here. And then uh, you can make that a lot darker and try and retrieve some of that data. I can't guarantee it would go well. And then you apply it and stuff. Um, tell me if you want that in the video because I would happily make that. And then arguably the best way to do that to do all the color grading is with a LUT or a lookup table. Um, so it's a file you can make. A uh, program that is used professionally is DaVinci Resolve. You can make a LUT with that. Um, so I've got one on my desktop. I have um, a bunch of stuff. But then here is a .cube file, uh, which is apparently the format for 3D lookup tables or 3D LUTs as they're usually called. So I'm just going to turn all of this off. And now the image doesn't look too great. But then as soon as I enable the LUT, I already have the file picked. And it gets a heck of a lot better. Uh, I could still use some work. I uh, made the LUT based off a different uh, image. Uh, and then you can also change the in interpol bleh, interpolation. Uh, not seeing much of a change other than in scopes. So I'm just going to leave it default. But there's another way you can do that. Now I've gone over a bunch of the different ways to uh, do some more color grading in Shotcut. It's a little bit more advanced, but that may be how you need to get your desired result. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. I will see you next time.